Hi, this is Ron from my backyard and we promised you earlier that we were going to show you how to make a smoker. So we're going to get going on that today. So the first thing to do is find, uh, find a good box. So what I've used is, this is an old commercial refrigerator, a beverage cooler, and it was broke down, no refrigeration in it or anything else, but it's a nice insulated box, big inside. So I think it's going to make me a dandy smoker. So what we're going to do is we'll be showing you, going to install my heating element. We've got a four gang plug that we wired up. We'll be mounting that and the smoke generator. So uh, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is measure up and drill my holes through the side of the smoker for my heating element. So just kind of find the midpoint, which is about 12 and a quarter inches. And the height that this sits off the ground is about one inch in the middle. So I don't know what this is. I'll mark now 12 and a half inches, 12 and a quarter inches out. Enough and an inch high. You'll notice I drilled two separate holes here. So I'm going to finish off this hole with a uh, with a step drill. But you'll notice that this is wide, so just a flat one-inch round hole wouldn't have worked. So when I come through those two holes, I'll be able to widen it out. And get that plug in through there. So I come through on the back side now with a step bit. See how we did. Need to get some lubrication on my drill bit to keep it cooled down a little bit, but we're almost there. So I noticed that the uh, first time I've ever worked on one of these, this outside material is a lot thicker and a lot tougher than the inside. So and, uh, get some lubrication on things to keep my drill bit a little cooler. I'm not already too late. All right, we'll see if they're going to fit now. Might have to do a little more work on the inside or get it a little bigger out there. So I've got the uh, hole big enough now, and I'm just going to smooth up the edges a little bit with some emery. Uh, I thought I had a saw file in my pickup, but apparently not. So good idea, just take the sharp edges off of it. It uh, doesn't look too bad for somebody like me. So I can either leave it pulled in and just put a screw in there or a little dab of uh, JB Weld or something to hold it in place. I think I'm going to push it out towards the center, and when I get all done, I'm just going to finish that off with a little spray foam in that. So that's burner placement. So now we'll start on uh, mounting our main plug in. I pre wired a four gang outlet in an outdoor box on the. Uh, on a piece of uh, 10 gauge extension cord. 10 gauge extension cord's done good for about 30 amps. We're only gonna be pulling 15 out of this maximum. <laughs> but nice long cord, make it bigger rather than smaller. So I've got all the plugs sealed up. So this box, I'm gonna wanna go roughly in the middle of things. So when I plug in my heat controller, uh, the air pump for the smoke generator, uh, things like that. We've got plenty of cord to reach the box, so we'll just get it up here to where we're centrally located. So, uh, we're just gonna do a quick measurement here. Uh, in there and there, we got about five feet, so we're gonna come down <coughs> about uh, so we're gonna come down 30 inches. Now, I want you to notice I was smart enough not to try marking this spot with the uh, black sharpener. Wise beyond your years. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to get another one marked here. (coughs) 
So the measure twice, cut once rule, not applicable with smoker building? No, it's not. If I make them look too good, then people will want me to do them for them. <laughs> we already, <laughs> they already want us to make the bacon for them. Yeah. I have uh, the heat controllers, the uh, Bayright heat controllers. We'll put the number in the description box of these. I get these off of Amazon. Uh, absolutely love them. So it'll probably, I don't have the right screws with me right now for that, but it'll get mounted about right up in here. So uh, make sure that when I'm picking my spot for that, that I can get, actually I'm going to mount it probably about right alongside of here. And my heater element cord will easily reach that. So that'll be good. So that's that's most of it. I guess we could uh, plug this in real quick and check and make sure that the that the heater unit's working. If my cord's long enough. Let's do it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount our temperature probe. This is what plugs into the controller tells us what temperature that's in. Uh, I want to do it about roughly two thirds of the way up the box. That. Uh, you know, it's always heat rises, so that gives me a pretty good estimate of what I'm getting up top anyway. So the heat controller is the critical cog in this machine, and it takes power from the power box, and it takes the input of the sensor probe, and when it gets cool enough, it will energize the heat plug and fire up the heater that we just installed in the bottom. So right. let's take a quick close look at that control panel. You can see there's a power uh, set up down controls and then there's a heating and a cooling plug and he's plugged the heater into the heating plug. So right now that heater, and I can smell it, I can smell it burning right now, it just turned on. Yeah, so uh, this unit only goes up to about 217 degrees which is good enough for smoking sausages and bacon and stuff like that if you're doing brisket or trying to do something like that they make another one of these that I'm in uh, the process of testing that will go up a lot higher temperature I've been having some accuracy issues with the other one I've been trying not this one these have been bulletproof for me but when I when I get the final determination on the other one I'll let you know about it Oh, I could, oh yeah, yeah, we had lots of heat in there. Now we could do something else right now, and that's we can close it up and see how fast it heats up. Let's so, do it. Uh, we're at 58 degrees in there right now. She's a little breezy on Stavis Bay today, but beautiful. Is that climbing at all? Now that we shut the door. Uh, 58.2, So this is the same heater control you've seen us use in the air dryer for the meat and it's very sensitive. It's also very good and reasonably priced. Wow, we're job. already at 74 degrees and I haven't stopped recording so uh, that was in what, two, three minutes tops? Yeah. 20 degrees it heated up in there. If you're looking to buy one of these uh, old refrigerators like this, uh, I have found I have found all sorts of good stuff in the business section of Craigslist. Uh, you know, so you see all sorts of stainless steel ones in there, but something that's got insulation in it already is great. Uh, come over here to my old smoker for a minute, Brent. Now my little smoker, uh, it was an old bun warmer. It had maybe about an inch of insulation in it, probably uh, just fiberglass. And it was starting to fall and falling down. It wasn't holding temperature very well. So I just got some half inch uh, foil back foam insulation and just glued it on all the way around. And that really took care of all issues of that. So. What 
are we at? Well, wow, this is this is really uh, really a good unit. Uh, we're already up to darn near 90 degrees in that thing, so this thing's going to heat up quick. So, uh, good unit. Very very happy with with this case. Hi, this is Ron from my backyard. We're back on day two of building the smoker and I wanted to go into more detail with you this time about what I've done with the smoke generator and how exactly it's built. So this is just a piece of four inch uh, schedule 40 pipe. It cost me $18. Uh, about a foot long. This one's a little longer than that because that's what they already had cut off. So in the top part of it, I've drilled, you can see I've drilled a hole for a piece of half inch uh, pipe and tapped it out. And on this side's a piece of eighth inch pipe coming in almost across. So what we'll have is we'll have air entering here and it'll push the smoke out of the smoke generator through this pipe which will go inside the smoker. Down here I put a little uh, piece of eighth inch pipe in here with a little valve on it. I blow a little bit of air through here to give me more or less smoke. A little, and I, a viewer suggested that uh, or asked if I had a control valve on the air supply in the bottom and I thought man that's a pretty good idea to do and I didn't on my old smoke generator so I've added it now. So if you look inside the bottom uh, you can see that I just put a little uh, a 90 on the bottom that'll tilt up and that'll put the blow the smoke up into the things, the chips. And I don't know if you can see it from the camera angle, we've got uh, just a piece of uh, flattened expanded metal screening in the bottom of that. Uh, and it's just supported on these three bolts. So this unit here, uh, I imagine with all my fancy little brass parts and everything else, I might have uh, 40 bucks into it. If, you, if you're buying a similar model online, you're looking at $200, and, and trust me, they, they don't hold up as well as what one of these do. So, uh, let's go over and we'll show you how we install it next. We're back here. We did a little fabricating uh, at home. So, I built a heat shield here that just protects my uh, burner and keeps the heat down a little bit. So, I just simply slips in right over the top of my burner. We'll just sit in there like that. And then I made another shelf here that I'll set a drip tray on top of and you'll notice I've left another inch and a half air space in there. The reason I leave this extra air space in is uh, I've had fires in a smoker before from stuff dripping down onto the heat tray or a bare burner. So this leaves a little bit of an air gap in there and then we'll set my drip pan on top of that. So it shouldn't be under any direct heat when, uh, you know, if you end up with too much grease in it. And if you notice when I did this, I left the front side of it open. The reason for that was simply uh, sometimes I like to uh, need more heat and I can just take a tray like this and put some briquettes in it and just slide it in there and that'll give me a little more heat if I need it. Getting ready to install the smoke generator. I screwed in a two inch uh, pipe nipple and I put a coupler in here and this is a three inch pipe nipple. I did it this way, number one, I want to keep the smoke generator spaced out away from the wall of my smoker so it doesn't burn up the insulation because this will get pretty hot. And the length of this is variable. This depends on how thick the wall of your smoker is. So I'm going to go ahead and put this through the hole. I drilled my hole about two inches above uh, my drip pan holder. That's just so I can use various thicknesses of drip pans and whatnot. So that should slide right through there. Now I'm going to Simply, I got a washer here. So, 
that's it on this. I did not screw this down just hand tight fine because this is going to plug up with creosote. You got to take it off every once in a while and burn the creosote and whatnot out of it. So on top here we've got the speed controller for the fans. Uh, we'll give you the model number of the fans that we use in the description box. Uh, good little fan. So I've just taken that, put the speed control there. And then I've gone inside the smoker and just, I just kind of temporarily mounted them right now. I don't really know the exact position that's going to end up being good for me. And I just spliced both fans into the single heat controller. So we've plugged in the, uh, our power going to our four gang outlet. And uh, so we're going to show you the heat controller, Bayright heat controller goes up to like 215 or 217 degrees, all the higher the thermostat goes. I've had excellent luck with this unit, really, really like it. So now I'm gonna take this cord goes down to my burner. So I'm gonna plug that into the heating side of this and that'll start heating up. Now you can see where we started our temperature at and with any luck at all, it'll be coming up soon. This is the aquarium pump that puts air to the smoke generator. So we'll plug that in and get it going. I don't know if you can hear that on the video. It's, it's making some noise. And then our fans, uh, we don't really know what speed we want them, but they're plugged in here. So you can see why I use two four gang outlets in this. Uh, another thing on the heat controller, there's a little thermostat, the uh, control that runs this is just inside on this little wire here. It's already heating up in there. So. Uh, we're going to get the smoke generator going, and uh, while we do that, uh, I'd like you guys to try to come up with a name for this smoker. It's kind of a beast here, so uh, I'd like to hear your suggestions for a name for it. So to fire off the smoke generator, I've got a few briquettes going here. And nice hot ones out, all that five or six of those to just kind of get it going. Had the air to the bottom of things shut off, so I'm going to kick that on now. I didn't let those briquettes heat up very much, so uh, might take a minute for the ship to get going good. And we've got our first smoke going into the smoker. Now, for now, I'm just using a brick as the top of my uh, cover for my smoke generator. I'll probably do something fancier and better down the road, or maybe I'll find a tin can that fits it just right. We've had it running now for about 20 minutes. Everything's warmed up a little bit. The temperature's already up almost 100 or 50 degrees, over 50 degrees from where we started at. Smoke generator's been going, so we'll open it up and see how it looks. Well, I'd say we've got smoke. So, one thing when you're doing a, a new unit like this, <coughs> either put a bunch of briquettes in it, get everything good and hot, let whatever paint's going to burn off, you know, kind of season it before you use it for the first time. So, <coughs> my old smoker, I used flattened expanded metal with stainless steel. I'm not sure what I'm going to use in this one. It's been a long time since I bought this stuff. It's not cheap. So, I'll leave it to yourself to create whatever you want for a rack. I smoke oysters and stuff, so I like a fairly small one. But you could make a wood frame and use bright racks, uh, you know, just plain steel. You could do some sort of welded wire. So that's that's up to you. So so we went ahead and did a quick test uh, run on things. And what I found was that I'd left a plastic drain plug in the bottom of the unit that was too close to the burner that was putting out a lot of bad odors. And I'm also going to go ahead and add maybe a half inch thick heat shield under between the heating element and the bottom of the smoker. Just to protect the insulation in the bottom of the smoker. So, so to give you an idea what we had into this, we've got uh, 
fans for about eighty dollars the air pump is about thirty dollars heat controllers about forty dollars smoke generator I got about fifty dollars into it and the heat shields I've got about fifty dollars into so I've got a grand total of about two hundred and fifty dollars I might have ten man hours into my time but if you tried to buy a smoker that does everything that this will do uh, you're gonna be into it for a thousand or better so anyway fun project and uh, we'll get a heat shield underneath of the element in the bottom and you'll see us using it smoking in a couple weeks don't forget to come up with a name for it for us thank you